A couple of days ago, I released a video about me operating HF Mobile on 40 meters as it was then. Uh, I had a few messages from people saying, well, okay, but tell us why you go about operating mobile and how you go about doing it. What sort of equipment you use, that kind of thing. Let's have a quick look at what I do. Uh, now, first of all, why do I go operating HF Mobile? Well, I do it for two main reasons. First of all, it's purely about detox. It's about getting away from the cares of work and any family issues and basically away from the daily grind, if you like. So a lot of people do it portable as well. Mobile has the same sort of soothing way, I suppose, of going about things for you. So I go out for maybe one or two, might not one or two, maybe two or three hours once a week to my local beach sometimes or I park up maybe on a hill and literally I just have a ball and a bit of fun. The other main reason why I go uh, working HF Mobile is to get away from the domestic noise at home. I get about, uh, and by the way, I mean the RF noise. So I get about S3 of noise on, say, a NFED halfway vertical. Uh, I don't get that at all when I work mobile or portable, but in this case mobile. So I'm 18 dB better off straight away in terms of my receive. On the lower bands, it's even more of a, an advantage, of course, because you tend to have more noise down on 40 meters than you do on 20, at least most people do. So it gets me away from any noise source. Now, how much of a compromise is the, is the transmit and receive capability? Well, a short whip on 20 meters, and by short, I mean, say, eight or nine feet long. Uh, was that two and a half to three meters? Well, it's going to probably be about 25%, 30% efficient. Uh, an NFED half wave would probably be about 80% efficient. So what's that? That's going to be something like about, I don't know, at the worst, a 6 dB difference. So you might lose 6 dB in terms of performance, bare performance, compared with a full size and a shortened whip. But you'll probably be better off by about 18 dB or more, depending on your noise floor at home, because you'll probably have zero noise working mobile. So you'll be 12, 15 dB better off purely by being out there away from the noise. So what do I use then to go on a mobile? Now, first of all, I am not a purist. I have not, you could say, not done things properly, frankly. I'm never going to drill, drill a hole in my car. That's not going to happen. So I'm reliant upon um, magnetic mounts. I haven't really looked into using something like a K400. Is it a K400, which is like a lip mount or something like that? I could look into that. But frankly, I don't think it matters a hill of beans. I think the biggest thing that determines whether you do well or not mobile is the propagation. So these days I tend to rely on, sorry about the jangling of the coax there and the plug, I tend to rely on the Slidewinder. Now the Slidewinder DX is being marketed really as a uh, part of a portable antenna system. So you have it on a mount and I've got, I've got the mounts as well for that. So you go like a spike mount or a, or a, tri or a tripod, uh, you put a whip into here and it usually goes on to a mount where you can run radials off it as well. Now for, um, Mobile HF, what I've decided to do, because it's quite a hefty, hefty little, not hefty, it's not that heavy really, but in terms of wind load and things, it's a bit of weight. I tend to use it on a triple mag mount, okay, rather than a single. And what you've got here is a sleeve where you can adjust it up and down. So up here would be your higher bands because you don't need much in the way of uh, in, in inductance there. But as you go down, say on 40 meters, you'll probably be down here somewhere. Now, triple mag mounts work if you've got any mag mount will work if you've got sufficient metal on the roof of your car. You tend to find for the triple magnet in particular uh, here that you'll need to use it really for 40 meters, probably at least 40 meters and not 20 meters and below. Now I tend to find I can use 20 meters and higher to 10 meters quite easily with a single mag mount, but I've got a reasonable size saloon car. I've got a Ford Mondeo. Uh, it's, a, it's an older model, therefore it's all metal and therefore it's quite good in terms of capacitive grounding. Now, alongside the slide winder for the actual radiating element, I use a tank whip because this is cheap as chips. It's, uh, oops, it's about £20 UK, about $25 or something. Uh, it's a quarter wave on 27 megahertz, right? So basically, you've got the, the, the thicker bar bottom bit that goes into your mag mount 3 8 thread. I'm trying not to have anyone's eye out here. That's the middle bit. You've got an Allen key adjustment there. So you loosen it to put then the whip into it here all right and you just attach it and what you then do is adjust the coil as i've just shown you to, whoops sorry about that to tune in different bands so effectively it should work and it does work really well as i say i had a lot of fun on 40 meters i'll put a link up there for that uh, the other day and i've worked into uh, japan 
and Australia and New Zealand with this particular antenna on 20 metres and Japan on 17 metres the other day was good fun as well. So overall, the antenna works really, really well as it stands for me. Now, let's look next at power. How do I power my radio? Now, in terms of power, the purist will tell you to, to basically run a line through to the uh, through the bulkhead into your into your uh, battery in, in, in the bottom of your car. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I don't do that. And I don't do that because, again, I don't want to be left with a flat battery at uh, 11 o'clock at night on top of a hill somewhere. So what I decided to do when I first came back into the hobby in 2016, I decided to go down the LifePo 4 route. Initially, I thought leisure battery, but God, they're heavy. And even sort of uh, sort of middle-sized sort of uh, lead-acid batteries are quite heavy as well. So I went down the LifePo route. Now, these are expensive, as you can see. I decided on getting a tracer, a 24-amp hour. Quite expensive, but there are cheaper options now out there, which a lot of people are using. Uh, M0TTQ, who is a prolific uh, portable operator down these parts, works all over the world with an NFED half wave, an 891, and a LifePo 4 battery. M0OVG, they're both called Stuart, by the way. He does a lot of parks on the air stuff, again, with this sort of technology as a battery powering his station. So what I've got is, has Mr. Beat in six years? It's a bit, a bit battered and bruised now because it's been through a bit with me. But effectively, I just put this on the dash or on the seat, um, passenger seat, and away you go. How, um, well, there we go. That's how light it is, look. I can hold that for quite a few seconds with my little finger. Uh, it's about a quarter of the weight of a lead-acid battery. What is good about these um, particular uh, batteries is the fact that you can really bash them. So, you know, with a lead-acid battery, you shouldn't really go below 50% capacity. Because at long, if you keep doing that and keep hammering it, you will damage it. With these things, as you can see, they will just keep going. They will keep going and they will keep going until literally you're 90% plus drained and then it will drop off. So basically, you know with the lead acid batteries, you can see from the graph, you've got like a, like a gradual reduction in, in capacity and charge. And therefore, you begin to see your... your um, display dim on your radio and it might affect your SSB audio as well. It doesn't happen with a uh, LifePo 4. You get down to about 12.8, 12.9 volts and it stays pretty solid until right at the end it drops off the edge of a cliff. So really they work well. They are a little bit more expensive but they are coming down in price. They are lighter and frankly it hasn't missed a beat. And to charge one, most of them come with a dedicated charger. All that is is literally just the same as like a laptop. It's like something that plugs into your uh, plugs into your um, battery. There's a power brick, goes into the wall, and it charges it dead easy. So you haven't got to buy another charger to go with it as well. So overall, I think these are, for what, uh, okay, they are expensive, but what they do and what, how they've helped me in terms of the hobby, uh, these this battery and all the LiPo 4 batteries, I think, uh, certainly from the reputable manufacturers, are really good. Check out the Ultramax brand for the UK, which seems to be really good, as well as Tracer. I know in, in the US, you have Bioeno, which I think is also a very good make as well. That's my suggestion anyway. I go the LifePo 4 route. You can, of course, use a, a leisure battery, maybe a lead-acid battery or a couple of them connected in parallel. You can do that as well, um, but this is just my choice. Other antennas I've used, going back to those, you can see from my previous videos, I'll put some links there. For example, I've used uh, Ampro Hamsticks, uh, which I think are monoband, well, they are. They're monoband antennas, which work really, really well, and they're quite cheap. I've used also a the, um, hang on, let me get it here. It's the copy of the MFJ1979. It's called the MRQ213. Got it from Moonraker in the UK. It's a bit more expensive, but of course, it's basically extendable. So it's like in this fully um, retracted state, it is basically a quarter wave on four meters. It's a meter long. It can operate. It can operate all the way up to about five and a half meters long. So it's actually a quarter wave anywhere from twenty meters up to four meters. And I've used that in the past as well. And had some good fun with it. Not usually in conjunction with the slide winder. Usually straight into the, into the triple mag. With the amp pros, I find you can get away with using the single mag mount from twenty meters and upwards, providing you have decent capacitive ground on your car. Any other questions or comments, please list them below. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll catch you on the next one. And enjoy your mobile operating too. 7-3.